how many producers like are trying to get that RG placement, bro? You don't Crazy. understand. That, that man is a is a hermit. I didn't even <laughs> when he said that we had him on the on the record. I was like. Hey guys, what's good? It's about off to off the music. I'm here with OK Warren for a Rapzilla freshman interview. Uh, let's get it. Let's what get it. Good? Let's get it. That was a good. Job. <laughs> let's, go, let's go. What's good, Warren? How you doing, bro? Good job. I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm chilling. I'm blessed, bro. Appreciate you for hopping That's on good. this interview. Yes, sir. Uh, we know we already had like a, a brief interview about who you are on the article page. If y'all are interested in that, make sure you go to rapzilla.com and check that article. Uh, but this time we want to go into a little bit more deeper. Uh, a little bit more to, just to learn more about you uh, what you believe and kind of like delve into CHH and all that kind of type of stuff so yes, sir. let's get it yeah, let's it's get gotta it. be deep. all right let's go let's go Crazy. so I mean let's start out let's say Warren you had a you had a phenomenal year this year and the year's not yeah. even done yet bro praise like God praise like God that's half it. a year still I mean you've been going strong let's see perhaps a freshman uh, not to mention like all the other placements you've had the sum the yeah. one one six summer playlist with the yes, Tahi NK four yes, Osmanic on that big stepping record with RG, Thanks. bro. Thank that's God. a bro. You, you gotta Thank understand uh, how many producers like are trying to get that RG placement, bro. You don't understand. Crazy. That, that man is a is a hermit. I didn't even <laughs> when he said that we had him on the on the record. I was like, <laughs> serious? You're not pulling my leg right now. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's crazy. I know. I was like, yeah, you, oh, cause like, okay, cause like, uh, we we see your stories and like, when a producer goes like, oh, I got some big things planned. It's like sometimes it's like, oh, it's a big th- like. Obviously, it's a big thing for you personally, but like sometimes right. people just forget about it, right? It's like, right? Cause like the records don't come out until like months later, and so it's like yeah. it's waiting. But like you can announce it at the right time. You're like big things happening next day or the week after like yeah this is what's happening like yo wait, calm down bro calm down it's about humility bro it's it's really honestly just really actually being quiet for real that's it i I learned that the hard way sometimes and the the, the best way sometimes i feel you i feel you yeah that's that's very important humility i bring that up like because like a lot of i feel like a lot of people start to jump the gun and be like oh it's just like it's a solid deal it's done but nothing is really done until it's out right that's it that's it no like it's, it's humility is your best friend in this game because the moment you decide to get prideful it's it's just pride coming before the fall and he doesn't like the bible doesn't just say that just because yeah exactly that that fall can get dangerous trust it's me crazy. for real bro. <laughs> yeah and i feel like you've done a good uh job so far kind of navigating your way through that so i'm gonna start off with like just to get deeper like obviously in the article we covered but who you are what you've done like a brief kind of background but i want to kind of get deeper into like like what your testimony is or if you have any inspirational story or something like that like, yeah. that you want to share yeah yeah um so ultimately for people that don't know me at all from joe schmo uh my name is warren willis uh, i like to tell people i'm a humble a humble fixture in the mind of my father that makes mm-hmm. background music for poetry ultimately that's all i do that's that's, that's, that's my story you should, you should be a rapper bro <laughs> <laughs> that's it. No, no, actually, I do write spoken word. I think that's a whole that's other dope. thing. That's kind of going to, I don't know when that's going to actually make it to the public, but yeah. we'll see. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I just uh, born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, and then we moved to Florida when I was about like eight, nine years old. Two loving parents, an amazing family, five sisters, two brothers, um, two dogs that we used to have. Mm-hmm. I have to keep the dogs, man. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I'm okay, I promise. <laughs> no, um, but no, nah, I just typical teen not even typical teenage life but just like you know school struggles with depression suicide pornography the the likes Mm -hmm. and still navigating it but like growing still Mm -hmm. I can't say that I'm where I want to be but I can't say that I'm where I was so uh, God is gracious that's it that's that's dope that's dope bro um yeah, that's that's inspiration. I feel like everybody can relate to this, especially people from our generation, younger. Yeah. Young cats can really relate to that, you know, especially nope. I feel like I feel like we are in a space or in a generation where we have a little bit more of the pressures and the social anxiety that yeah. pe- like people in the past did not have. And everything we, is expected to be instant and right away. And like yeah. we we end up living life that way and creating instant things out of things that are supposed to take time and patience Mm -hmm, exactly not good yeah i like i feel like it's this generation like so fast that straight out of high school you're always dealing with a lot of like 
evil, let's say, right? So yeah. it's like I just I just finished my third year in college and I'm 19. <laughs> legit, legit, same way. Bro. Everything was like this fast. Like everything was expected to move like this and yeah, stuff, like slow down. Make sure you have your 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 mind right before you go into anything. Because God God is in the business of, of growing people, and sometimes that growth is painful, man. <laughs> I feel you, yeah, yeah, bro, for sure. It's painful. That's crazy. Uh, speaking of like uh, CHH and you doing like making beats for CHH, uh, yeah. I want to like kind of de- get into the CHH base, and then we go more into your production. So right. uh, first off, like what as a producer i feel like we're in a unique position where we have one step in in the industry and one step out as the audience as well right right so what is something as a producer and a general listener do you find like what problems in chh do you want to address yeah um i always i always tiptoe on hot coals <laughs> when i say something out loud i mean like if anybody knows you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I'm always, and especially knowing that I do have a platform, because I think it's, I think it's one thing that not that a lot of, and maybe that's one thing, a lot of CHH artists don't understand that their platform is so so huge, mm-hmm. and the uh, and the things that they fail to do in their spiritual life mm-hmm. affect their influence on the kids that like look up to them. They're looking up to you, and like you know, the moment something comes out that like you know, this person did this or this person, you know, just, just a lot of things. And it, it, it tears that it tears that kid apart because they were looking up to you. And it's mm-hmm. one of those things where, yes, like, you know, Christ needs to be our only example, but like, make sure you're setting a good example for even the, the, the few people that are watching you. And I think it's CHAs is really, and it's, it, it may just be a pride struggle. They, it does stem back to pride. And just sometimes feeling like you're owed things because you put in this much work. Um, and not being humble enough to, I guess, help the little guy, but it's also the little guy not humbling himself enough to know, like, you didn't put in the work. Mm-hmm. So don't just expect everybody to give you a handout. Exactly. Um, the Bible, I think, I think I was reading it last night, actually. Um, the Bible was talking about, um, and they will eat the fruit of their labor. Um, blessing and prosperity will be theirs. And it's one of those things where he said, you know, and they will eat the fruit of their labor, which means the fruit can happen but it's going to happen by you working mm-hmm. it's going to happen by you like working your butt off. And I think CHH is just so, so, and maybe it's just a, a fan base, but it's so bent on like, Oh, you should like this person because they're, they're talking about God. It's like, but are you good at it? Like, I, like, do I want to listen to your music on purpose? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, maybe, maybe just that. It's just ultimately a pride issue, honestly. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's not me like pointing fingers and saying this is a problem that I have with CHH mm-hmm. it's really this yeah. is what I saw in me yeah and it's dangerous and I want to warn anybody that's like watching this is just like pride is pride is icky for sure icky for stuff sure. and you can you can get in some really bad situations being prideful mm-hmm. so you got to kick that definitely bro like yeah that's that's a that's a that's a good way to like kind of like talk about like a general like kind of generalization of what chh can go through especially given the platforms and how uh rapid kind of like going in chh could be right especially when you have good music and you have a good fan base and you know what you're doing just like that and it's like if you don't have that solid foundation it's easy to slip and get prideful and like yeah I love that example about the little guy and the big guy because we always look at the big guy like, oh, not giving the yeah. handouts, but it's like it's little guy don't, doesn't put in work. Like there's a like, there's a there's a level of humility that everyone needs to adopt. It's not just like the the, the it's not just the leaders that have to be humble. It, mm-hmm. It's everyone exactly. because really, you know, the Bible says, you know, humble yourself and you'll be exalted. <laughs> Exalt yourself and you'll be humbled. Yeah, that's still true to this day, and we've seen mm-hmm. it. We've seen it happen yeah. to this day. People get prideful. And, it's just like life, like life happens. It's not even like God's hand. It's just it's life, happens life happens the way that life happens. And God's just like, I told you my way was better. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's there's different levels to humility and you got to figure out where you stand yes. in that. So that's yes. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's take a, so we went from, okay, we come from your testimony to like who you are to CHH. I want to kind of take it back a little bit more and talk about, because CHH is a subgenre of hip hop, like a whole exactly. No, so yeah, a sub, 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 sub. Legit, yeah. legit. So it's like it's crazy. So that how do you like as a producer, you work on like 
I guess, would you, okay, let me ask this first. Would you consider yourself CHH exclusive? That's a really good question. It's something that I battle with a lot. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm thinking like, yo, like what if this person said they wanted to make music with me, what do I say? Um, and, you know, my answer to that is I don't consider myself CHH exclusive. I don't. Mm -hmm. um, reason being, God created for Christians and non-Christians alike. Mm -hmm. And it was all supposed to be an example of who he is. Like it's, yep. it's all, everything we see that God created is supposed to point us back to him. Mm -hmm. So what I want my creations to do is when people look at me and the things that I've created, I want them to look at me and, and, and commune with me. And I will always point them back to the fact that like, even though this person, and I, I mean, there's, a, there's an extent that I'm even as far as like songs and stuff that I'll let mm -hmm. drop. If he's like, you know, cursing every other word, like, hey, I don't know if I want to be associated with that because I'm not trying to get shot yeah. by like nobody. Though. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also like, man, like sometimes that those real life struggles come out in language and language differs with culture. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I want to be able to speak to people's cultures and I don't want to exclude anybody because their culture and the way they grew up was like, okay, this was fine. Now, of course, it doesn't mean I'm going to condone mm -hmm. everything in their culture because they're not called to condone culture and conform to it. We're transforming it. Yeah. So I don't, I wouldn't say I'm a CHH exclusive at all. Cool. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, so yeah. kind of building on that, like a part two would be, so as you kind of, kind of mentioned, but would you have any concerns of what kind of artists use your beats? So like, as you did say, like, oh, if they cost kind of like this, but yeah. I feel like, I feel like that a lot of people, especially in CHH, they get that question. Like I've got that question. Yep, like, yep. what if someone cusses on your beats? What are you going to do? Right. Or like someone, someone talks about like some demonic kind of thing on hey. your music. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I, I like, I, I sit there, I'm like, I will get to it when he gets to it type of deal. I feel like that kind yeah, of mentality yeah, yeah, is just yeah. there. Like, cause like, I'm, in my mind, I'm like, that's not going to happen. Like whatever, whatever. But like sometimes, yeah. It's yeah. kind of, it's like a like a like a thought pondering question. Like, I wonder right. like what would happen. So in your right. case, what would you someone someone actually took your bought yeah. your beats and like they did what they did and said, "Yo, bro, he's a demo. I got the mix back, bro. What you think?" <laughs> that was like, like that. oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but no, I get it. What are you doing? And I think it's one of those things where like this this I, I'm gonna preface this with this question is like bound like it's it's a question that's like made to arrest the Christian type thing. It's one of those things where you just want to like, you just want to, you just want to pick at me in a sense. Yeah. Just like, cause if I say, if I say, yes, I would still drop the song. You're like, oh, you're a bad Christian and stuff. Yeah. But if I say like, no, I wouldn't drop the song, but I'd be okay with somebody cursing on it. And it'd be like, well, you're picking which sin is worse. Yeah. And it's just like picking my battles in a yeah. sense. Yeah. One of those, like I, I can, I can, I can relate to somebody who curses and things like mm -hmm. that, because like that's that's kind of where I came from, and I'm mm -hmm. still like, I can't say I'm perfect at it. I am doing a whole lot better than what I used to be, yeah, for sure. Um, but it's also something that I want to walk people through because it's like a culture that I came from that I know like is not good, and I want to walk mm -hmm. people through it. Now, like take like the whole other extreme of like the demonic thing. <laughs> I would approach that with a lot of caution. And I would I would actually, like, for me, and this is what I pray towards, I do believe, like, this would be my reaction. But it's one of those things where I'm like, fam, we can't drop this. I cannot drop this with, with you on it. And if you drop it, like, this is you alone. Like, you, you alone, and I am going to make sure that people know that I do not condone mm -hmm. anything you're rapping about or talking about or singing about it here because this is not good. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of, not not in the sense of like condemning them, but making them see like this lifestyle mm -hmm. is not necessarily what you want. Like it's not as it's not as appealing as it is. There's there's stuff underneath that's not it's gonna fall through. It's like a it's like a it's like a false trap door. Exactly. And it falls out from underneath you. Whether it's here or there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legit. Crazy. But yeah, I yeah. That question yeah. is so, so jam packed. But yeah, that's, that's that 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 ultimately be my my that, my take on it. That that's that's a really good way to approach it. Cause like, cause like, bro, I'm telling you, like, I have some of my friends, like, they're non-believers. They do they know I'm like a CHA is doing beats or whatever, and like producing and like in the music yeah. thing. 
And like, what if Drake, you know, buys your beat, record label, huge thing, you know, and yeah, like it's yeah. good for your career, but yeah. like, you know, he does a little, little, little sinful nature on it. I'm like, like, okay, like, and that's like, yeah. that is a question that a lot of us get stuck on because it's like, should I, can I advance my career? Cause this could be a big record, like whatever, Grammy, whatever, advance yeah. my record, but I'm not really sacrificing my morals or like my spiritual being because, right. because I don't condone it. Right. But then and again, you're allowed where, yeah. to be released, right? Yeah. And it's one of those things where it goes back to, you know, God's creation. God's creation is for like us to look at him, but people will take his creation and do a ton of other things with it. So it's like, does he stop creating? Does he just like stop making human? No, mm-hmm. like it's like you have to look at him as a creator and say, like, what was your ultimate purpose for making this? And so I'd hope that like fan bases and people can look at if I have a Drake record like that, come back to me and say, like, did you were you like did you condone this is it something you pushed and hopefully my answer is always like no but it's giving me the opportunity to have a conversation with you so mm, true that's that's, awesome. that's the goal yeah. i want to even, even if it opens up the door for like a couple of people to have a conversation with me about like where i stand and, and how i feel and 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 not necessarily in a prideful way but in the most humble way possible point them to the cross and say like this is the only reason that I can do what I'm doing. The only reason mm-hmm. that I have creativity at all, at all at all is because of the ultimate creator giving me that ability. Yeah, exactly. So, That's awesome. And yeah. hopefully, like, God willing, like, that opens that connection with you to the mainstream side of, like, if Jake uses your beast, like, and, like, you have, you were able to connect with him, kind of, like, kind of, like, yeah. slowly ministering to him as well, or, like, any secular artist, not just Drake, I'm not just putting out Drake, yeah. just saying, you know, like. Shout out Drake, though. Shout out Drake, yeah, for real. Six on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so talking about like secular and CHH, um, what there are some similarities, but there are also differences between both mm-hmm. industries, not only just because of what the, the message is. But what do you what do you say from a producer's uh, aspect are the pros and cons of secular versus CHH and like what are the what are your likes and dislikes for for both? good question because as, as a producer it's very different from just in general mm-hmm. um i think my thing with chh and maybe it's because i've been in the i've been in the spot for so long mm-hmm. is it's just like you know anything goes and like if you if you say like i'm not really rocking with this song you're not rocking with god <laughs> and it's just like wow you don't rock with God, man. <laughs> like you don't. It's, it's Christian rap. Oh, but you'll go and listen to you go and listen to Lil Nas X or something like that. And I'm like, but the music is like, good. <laughs> like the good. music, the music the quality, itself, the quality is good. The quality yeah. of it is good. And it's just like, I, I don't know much about the secular world, but even in that world, like people are like they're pushing to make sure their their art is the best. Mm-hmm. And and of course, some of that stems from pride, in a way of just like I want this to be the best thing I've ever put out. Um, I just don't feel like CHH does that a lot, mm-hmm. but maybe that's just from where I'm at. Um, another thing too is just fan bases, but fan bases in general are ruthless. Yeah. Sure. Um, but you know, just just kind of treating at least artists like they don't have like a soul, like they don't have like feelings, feelings and stuff. Like you'll you'll just be like, yeah, I'm not really like I remember. Oh my goodness, I remember just going through the comment section. And it was one of the um, one of the Reed Trekkers playlist songs. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say which one it was. Um, somebody was in the comment section and was like, "This is possibly the worst CHH song I've ever heard." Dang. And I was just like, "Fam, like, really? <laughs> First of all, why did you have to type that out? Right. Why did you have to do that? What made what possessed you to like? Okay." <laughs> And it's like, you know, oh, it's my opinion. And if you don't want my opinion, then don't put out the music. And it's like, it's not something that I know how to navigate yet. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had to, which is like not even a flex, but it's just like, I don't know what I would do if somebody's just like, no, like this is, you're you're trash, bro. Like you're, they didn't look like, because me and and, and Jay Boski and Ty, we (laughs) we have this group chat and we just, we we call each other trash all the time. Like we're just like, yo, you suck. That's it. Uh, (laughs) but i don't know how i would i don't i i would hope i'd be humble in dealing with that too but yeah the fan bases they're rough yeah so, also yeah. chh struggles with like breaking out of like 
one specific sound. Like it's, I don't know what it is, but it's like, you know, I, I, I made some house stuff earlier this week. And I like, I don't even know if they do this, but I also don't know who I would send this to because it's like everybody wants like Richard Milley, you know? Yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's actually crazy because, yeah, because this is what I'm trying to say from a producer, like, those are, those are really good, like, concerns in terms of, like, the big differences. But as a producer, I feel like in, if you're trying to be in CHH, you're kind of limited to the sounds or they put you in a box kind of deal. Like, exactly. like I, I experiment a, a lot. Like, I've been doing a lot of rock stuff. I'm, like, right. like hardcore metal. So I'm, like, who do I – I can't do send this to anyone, right? Because, like, same way for house and for other genres because – it's like there's a do particular with, sound. What, what do I do? do? Like, what do, yeah, I do exactly. It exactly. just sits in my vault, and like, and then I and then I start listening to it. And I'm like, you know what? This is not good, and it kind of deters me from being like, you know, outreaching with my inspiration, outreaching mm-hmm. with my creativity. It's like, what do I need to do to make sure that doesn't happen? And you know, thank God, he's like opening different doors mm-hmm. that are kind of getting that attention of people that can mm-hmm. do that type of thing. But it's like, yeah, you know, we got to try something different. Definitely. every so often that's why i love i love dudes like like uh simply ollie and lazarus mm-hmm. those two at least every time okay. they drop it's something different and i'm like nice. dude nobody's doing this and y'all are doing this type legit, thing legit. that is that is definitely crazy yeah ollie and laz are killing it like definitely yeah. their sound is very different um, <laughs> my dogs <laughs> for real um so speaking of like production and uh kind of like for being put in a box what are mm-hmm. so this is like a two-part question but like what are there any overused production trends techniques that are currently being used if so what are they yeah i think i think i'm tired of guitar beats i think i'm tired of that i think i'm tired that's of hearing like, those that's like 90 percent of what we're doing but i think it's also yeah i think it's also i think it's also <laughs> <laughs> being here in Florida, like Rod Wave, you know, that's the one big thing. And he's all like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's all, that's all I get to hear when, I, when I'm out anywhere. And everybody's like, yo, he's the goal. And I'm not gonna lie, he's hard, he's crazy. Yeah. But if I hear another guitar beat with like a, <laughs> like the, 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 the chipmunk type singing thing, turn it off, man. He said turn chipmunk. It <laughs> turn it off, bro. Turn it off. But is that, and then man, and maybe like, it's not a, it's not a technique that's good, but you know, it, I, people have been saying it for years, tune your 808s. Yes. Tune your 808s. That's Every producer that hears this, bro, tune your mother freaking 808s. You know, it, it's crazy. I don't understand like how you don't do it. Like it's clearly audible. It like, doesn't, you can like hear it, it doesn't sound good. Sometimes it, I just, it just goes in the wrong thing. And I'm like, I kind of right, like I I I I pause everything because I'm like no 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 and I start like like humming where it's supposed to be and like yeah. matching it because I'm like I can't listen to this again yeah. with this all beat or I'm gonna throw my laptop. Legit, bro. <laughs> Producers out Crazy. there, bro. If you're it is out of tune, you go back and tune, tune them. Tune them joints, bro. Stop <laughs> playing with me, bro. Tune them joints. Oh my oh, goodness. You gonna throw hands? <laughs> oh, for real. Like like oh my gosh. Holy cow! When somebody like plays a beat and you that one, and it, and it's over and over again because like yeah. really with like the the type of beats that CHA yeah. makes, like it's just loops. Yeah. So it's like doom doom doom, and I'm like, <laughs> frick, dude, stop, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> That's actually crazy. Okay. <laughs> <Wow. Crazy>. So like- <laughs> got it on my chest. That's all. That's really okay, all. Go. You can wrap it up now. That's all I mean. I need to make it. sure y'all knew this. I guess this kind of leads on to my part two of that question was, what are some underrated, underutilized production techniques? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because you're trying to get me to give all my tools right now. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I'll give a couple. I'm going to keep a lot more because, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Across the code, huh? <laughs> I'm giving the I'm giving the game right now. So there's this plugin called Sound Delay. Mm-hmm. And I actually got it from this dude named Ogosh Leotis, one of the most like craziest producers on the face of the planet. But his bounce is legendary. Mm-hmm. And so it was something that I wanted to like emulate. I wanted to figure out and, and, and kind of solve. And literally you take that, you take that, you take that sample, that melody, put it in that Sound Delay plugin. There's this times 10 meter. You shift that up to maybe two or three. 
and it shifts the it shifts the melody of the sample over just a little mm-hmm. bit. And it, so it's it's doing that instead of doing like the one six of a step and moving it. Yeah. I'm telling you, bro, it'll take like something that has like like it hits and give it like that sway, that like yeah. that bounce and it's like this is outrageous. I've been I've been working on that type of stuff all week. I got bouncy records, bro. That is crazy. Bouncy records. Mad <laughs> bounce. Every producer watching this, like, write that down, write that down, bro. Straight up, write it down. That, and you know what? I'm a, I'm a, this is the only other one I'm gonna give. Everything else, that's me. The vet Looperator. Looperator is this beautiful right. plugin. <laughs> Until you can figure out how to roll hi hats and stuff and do it super well and do all mm-hmm. that cool crap, stick it in Looperator. Nice. Try things, bro. Honestly, just try things. Ultimately, mm-hmm. that at the end of the day, do your research, go to YouTube, go to YouTube Academy. Producers, go to YouTube Academy. Trust me. YouTube Academy is literally just typing in something that you like and figuring out how to do it. Mm-hmm. That's it. So that's that's my tip. That's it. That's it. Uh-huh. No more. No more games. Go. No I ain't going to ask game. anymore. I ain't going to ask anymore. <laughs> no more that's more a game. gem. That's a gem. um (laughs) so um what do you so as a producer like i feel like you kind of work really hard crank out beats like trying to grind like the all-nighters whatever just to like push that creative but like obviously there are highs and lows when it comes to this thing so as a producer when you face beat block when you feel uninspired what do you do stop 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 Honestly, I love this question so much because it's something that I, I've even and like producers and stuff in my DMs. It's weird to say because I really don't feel like I'm that big of a person. Uh, <laughs> but it's just like, they'll be like, oh, what do you do when you're feeling inspired? Like, do you just push through and just like make whatever? And and everybody's like, no, like push through, save the project because you'll end up liking it or you can, you, you can change it when you get out of the block. Stop. Because chances are, especially in the, in the, in the Christian world, that creative stop is because god saying take a break Mm -hmm. you need a break and the only way that you can do what i need you to do efficiently is take a break because a lot of times when we can't take a break it's because we're finding our identity and our creativity Mm -hmm. which is a dangerous spot to be in because it's like Mm -hmm. you are more than your creativity I, i think it's one thing that like i learned maybe two years ago i forget who told me when they said it, I was like, okay. Like, that was hard, but I don't know why I didn't know that already. You're more than creativity. You are a human. You have mm-hmm. life going on, dude. Female, exactly. whatever. Yeah. There's life going on around you. Everything is not about music and placements, bro. Everything is not about nice. music, placements, artists, meeting those big artists and stuff. Sit down. Because really, you can't reach that like higher spot until you're willing to rest. Mm-hmm. As much as everybody's talking about it, it's the grind time, prime time, and you gotta you gotta never sit down and never sleep. Blah, blah, blah. Millionaires are sleeping. <laughs> legit, legit. As much as everybody's talking about like, oh, like you know, they never sleep because they had to they had to grind. They planned. It's not because they didn't sleep, it's because they did plan. Exactly. And in your plan needs to be rest. That's the ultimate example that God gave us, and we just forsake it so much. Mm-hmm. that's 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 my exact same feeling i don't know like i can say i couldn't have said it better like that was exactly game that was game yeah, two that's game two a lot, a lot of people sleep on rest legit yeah. sleep on rest no no for <laughs> real, that's hard no. <laughs> that's hard what is that a double entendre i don't know i'm not yeah. really good at all those those they, words and crap they, they legit do because like I'm like, like, like they were like, oh, grind. It's all about the grind. Yeah, grind in your grind season. Take rest when you have to take rest because, like, once that creativity like yeah. comes to a block, if you push through, you just exhaust yourself and you start like right. find it's sickening. Right. Like, and trust me, like it's it's one of those things where like the Bible tells us that tomorrow is going to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will have its own troubles. Yeah. You don't need to be sitting up like awake trying to grind stuff out for the sake of anything yeah. you need rest you need mm-hmm. rest you really do as much as you say like no i can i can run off of it. i was about to say red bull and that was definitely gonna be like a like a, that was gonna feel like a shot to a couple of people that i know <laughs> not but uh, you're not running on red bull yeah your body is giving up 
Yeah, facts. And you're in a bad space. Rest. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> That's crazy. For real, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, like, in terms of kind of, like, coming off that, like, taking rest and uh, all that, like, when you're feeling uninspired, how, yeah. let's, let's take a kind of different approach from, we talk about the creativity, uh, let's go into the business side, well, kind of the business side, of oh. how do you <laughs> approach artists and what's your mindset like when you do? Yeah, I think my thing has always been let them approach me and not necessarily in a prideful way, but it's like, I don't necessarily want to get looked at as a dude who was like falling head over heels, trying to get a placement with anybody Mm -hmm. ever. I really don't think that's like, it's not good for your spiritual walk, honestly, Mm -hmm. but then also for your, your music walk, Mm -hmm. like, you know, with, with stepping, it wasn't me tripping head over heels, trying to get miles and stuff to do stuff. I, I entered a challenge. He saw the creativity. He saw the he saw the vision that I had to 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 be the type of person that I am, while also making the music that I make and that kind of thing. And it was just like he wanted to get on board. If you're so busy trying to create this like type of person in front of artists that honestly folds behind the scenes, you're you're bound to fail. You're bound to, you're bound to fail. Mm-hmm. So like me. I'm a nonchalant person. I'm cool. Like, I, I mean, at least I think I am. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like, I be chilling. And so when I, when I, when I go and I talk to artists, uh, specific example, Holy Smoke, which is whenever I talk about Holy Smoke, it's just like, I def- there's definitely snipers around here. Or <laughs> um, but nah, like it was just even the, like, the conversations I have with the people. It's, my mom told me like this, and it's crazy because my mom had game too. Mm-hmm. She said, treat everybody like they put their pants on the same way you do. Uh, they're all humans. They're all yeah. people. So it's just like, do what you do. Do what you love. If they get on board, bro, praise God. If they don't, praise God. Keep going. That's it. <laughs> That's uh, it. Yeah, exactly. Like, let, the, <clears throat> let the work speak for itself. Like, keep That's moving. It. For sure. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's the way yeah. to go. So, okay. Um. Let's kind of take it back. So from your perspective, I want to kind of like lean into what, so the young producers watching this, people who have like, maybe they made their first beat. It, well, they, they've been doing this for a month. I don't know. Like, let's Beautiful. Say. Like, Beautiful. Like, <laughs> Beautiful. Keep, keep going, guys. Keep going. Keep right? going yeah. And so it's like, what would you say to them, like in terms of reaching out to them and like, because like obviously they're, they say they're putting the work, but they're not getting any, placements or not anything yeah. like because well, like they don't have a social media presence let's say because like no one knows who they are right so they're not gonna yeah. people are not gonna hit them up so how would you go about from from that like because you all obviously started from that point how would you yeah. how were you able to kind of build a you know social media presence and placements yeah and so one like one don't 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 lean on social media too much social media is a really dangerous i, I said it like this before to one of my siblings actually when your tool becomes a crutch, you ha- you really have a problem at that point. Mm-hmm. When the when the tool that you have becomes something that you're leaning on, you're in danger. And mm-hmm. God is in the business of like like it, it looks really bad, but kicking that crutch out from underneath you because mm-hmm. it's like so. As far as the social media game and the rat race of social media, get out of the rat race. It's not worth it. Two, build with actual people. You know, a lot of people are too busy shooting for placements and things like that, like uh, uh, farther ahead, but they're not building with the people that are around them. And and, and I don't think I, I've known any up and coming producer, even people that talk to me that doesn't have at least a couple of people in their circle that they can build with and, and start to generate some some heat type thing. Mm-hmm. Focus on focus on what's right in front of you and whether it's whether it's, you know, music or whether it's life. Like, cause sometimes as you're sitting there sharpening that creativity, life is happening and you need to make sure your life is together so mm-hmm. that when that moment does come, that your creativity gets you to that <clears throat> platform, your life is put together. Because the moment you decide to just build music and you get that platform and your life is a mess, you realize you got there for no reason. It's, mm-hmm. it's it, at, at the top at that point, it's very lonely. So definitely. And then also treat, like I said before, treat every person, artist, people, 
no matter what inspiration they have to you, no matter what they are to you, treat them like they put their pants on the same way you do. Mm-hmm. That's it. Remain humble, but also humble them in your mind as well. No one's above anyone, honestly. We're all on the same level. And that might not be true as far as like <clears throat> popularity and fame, but as far as value and and the ability to do what you want to do, you can get there. Mm-hmm. So be patient with yourself, but also in the CHH world, and, and you know, I know maybe other producers and stuff will watch this, but CHH specifically, be honest with where you are spiritually. Because like I said, you know, if you're not dealing with your life well and you get that platform, we've seen what happens when people have the, like skeletons and things in their closet that they haven't dealt with and they get that platform mm-hmm. and they can live in it for however long. But if you don't deal with it, it's going to come and get you. Yeah. It's going to come and get you. Facts. And it sucks. <clears throat> that, that was deep. Dang. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. He, he just like that. He's him. That's it. <laughs> I'm him. Nah, I'm him. <laughs> um, so, I just, I just want to be like him. That's it. Yeah, for, for real. So let's see. We covered uh, that, that, that. Um, we're almost done, pretty much. I actually Ooh. had one more. I asked one more uh, before I get to the last question. But <clears throat> this wasn't on the thing, but kind of came to my mind. So for we talk about like people who are trying to come up and everything. So I want to delve more into the business aspect because since you've had these placements with like Weege, with uh, you know, all these other places, you know, with these artists. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to kind of like think about artists, say, who are on who might not know more about the business aspect in terms of like when they do get this place and what they do, right? So like say someone yeah. Reaches them out like, oh, we like this, be whatever, whatever. How do you solidify or protect yourself as a producer from, you know, getting screwed over pretty much? Like, yeah. you know, in terms of contracts, yeah. royalties, all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. what is your Con- process like in that? Definitely make sure, get it in writing, get it all in writing, emails, whatever you have to do, get it in mm-hmm. writing. Um, also, the more people you can involve in the process, the better as long as it's not just like one person to another because even with the read thing like there were a couple people mm-hmm. involved with even breaking up like splits and everything else so as many people as you can make sure they're all involved um and then make sure you're not just learning how to produce well but how to do business well managing your money right and every, everything else um because if they see that like you're just like a nonchalant kid that likes to make music or whatever, there's a pretty high chance that no matter where you are, CHH or secular, they're going to take the opportunity to say, mm-hmm. fool you. You didn't get it together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous and it sucks, but it's the world we live in. Mm-hmm. So That's definitely true. get it in writing, get it in writing, get it in writing. And 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 make sure you have a team some sort of team um <laughs> and if you can't find one dog if, if you're at the point where you're listening to this interview optos right here i'm right here even if it's like mm-hmm. yo hey i got this contract or something like it's pretty big i don't know how to look at this bro reach out reach out exactly. we're not all there's some of us that are monsters i'm gonna be honest but we're not <laughs> all monsters we're not all monsters i'm i'm so <laughs> I'm a helper. Call them out. We'll we'll call. We'll call them out after the interview. (laughs) Hey, you straight up. No kidding. (laughs) Kidding, 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 kidding. I really, I gotta stop because because somebody gonna see this. Like he was talking about me. Uh, But like, Uh, yeah, for real, producers, (laughs) producers, protect yourself. Um, you know, yeah. As as much as the creativity and like you actually grinding and putting on beats is important, the business is as equal equally or even more important. I'd say because. Like, even if, if it's like, it's like, what, 50, per, not even 50, it's like 40% creativity, 60% business. No cap. That's how it no is. Cap. It really is because no cap. I feel like producers are very slept on. They are very, you know, they're, they're really the underdogs because oh, yeah. in reality, like, I know this is a debate that goes on artists versus producers, but like, we kind of yep. have to structure the songs and we kind of have help the artists build a song, right? Yeah. So yeah. you have to learn to protect yourselves and, you know, get treated right. And be respectful. 
Yeah. So that's that's very. And important. the only thing that makes it different though is like most of the artists they're used to buying YouTube beats and stuff, so they think you know, oh like it's nothing, bro. I can just write my my raps on this, and you you don't like there's nothing you gotta dig dig into. Not knowing that, like, when you write your raps to my beats and you send it back to me and say, can you structure it like <laughs> this, this, and this? That's a lot of work, bro. And if you're going to, if you're going to pay me, like, you know, yeah. then make sure you pay me right considering yeah. the work yeah. that I did. Right, I had to be safe. Yeah, thanks, bro. Because, like, it really is. It's more than just a beat. I, and I but, feel like a, a lot, this is what uh, also I feel like, and I, I'm sure you might feel the same way, but like, I feel like artists really underutilize the producer's role. Like they kind of, yeah. they don't even think about what the producer's role, because in reality, there's a difference between a beat maker and producer. Because yeah. a beat maker is just a YouTube beat you buy off, whatever, that's yeah. a beat maker, right? Yeah, that's it. A producer is when you work with the producer, they buy the beat, whatever, send the mix back, whatever, and producers help craft it. Because we, yeah. I feel like artists, they hear the song like, oh, it's fire, but producers hear something that you guys don't. Because yeah. we're not, writing the song we're not recording yeah. we made the beat but we can structure how we sense the beat and we give our tips and help yeah. you not only with the not only with the uh creative side but we also want to help you on the business side of what we know because producers right. believe it or not a lot of producers know a lot more about the business than a couple independent artists do no cap and no it, cap it's but it's scary. also it's also because you know people are more than willing to take advantage of more producers than they are in the artists because in the artists like you know they do their thing and they can they can do pretty well mm -hmm. as a producer you depend on indie and like non-indie artists like you can fade away so you yeah. have to know your stuff yeah dangerous it is crazy. It's dangerous. Yeah. yeah so i mean that's the gems right there but we're gonna end it off with this one sure. question it's the last question that kind of ties it all together based on what you said okay. so what are some solid advice it doesn't have to be too long but advice you have for up and coming producers that are trying to enter CHH like see like or are already been in CHH or just in general like what's some advice you want to give to these up and coming producers yeah one get accountability get accountability because if you get to the point like where you're at the top of the game and you're like a Christian leader in a sense dog you have to have your stuff together and that means letting people know when you're failing, letting people know when you're struggling and things like that. Two, YouTube Academy, your best friend. You want to figure out how to do something, type it into YouTube and get it done. Start start, start experimenting. Get, break yourself out of guitar beats. That's how I say it. Guitar beats. Break yourself out of that. Um, three, and this is probably like the last one. Do what you want. Because because creativity is supposed to be fun. Creativity is not necessarily like like I'm not sitting over there making beats specifically for a type of person. That's not fun at all, man. Make what you want. Make what you're inspired by. Make what you want. Um, so yeah, get accountability. YouTube Academy. Learn what you need to learn. Make what you want. But also, ultimately, ultimately, over everything else, um, be humble. Be humble enough to to remember that you are a servant of the lord jesus christ and nothing else nothing more really whatever else you do is different from who you are make sure you have the separation that's, that's hard tough. i was talking to myself there for a second that's hard hey bro <laughs> sometimes it'd be your own it'd be your own right so it'd be your own own <laughs> for, real, for real but okay warren it was a pleasure having you on the interview you know we got in some really deep conversations. We appreciate yeah. you for, you know, on behalf of Rapzilla, I want to thank you for taking the time to answer these questions and do some deep questions. And hopefully viewers, producers, whoever's watching this, hope you found this, like, you know, enjoyable. And, like, you learned something. So, but for right now, it's your boy Opto, Opto Music. Okay, Warren, why? <laughs> We're going to be signing out. Peace.